What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about the PlayStation 5, because today we just got confirmation that one of the biggest rumors about this next-gen tech has now been confirmed false. There has been all sorts of leaks and rumors and speculation about the fact that Sony was wanting to expand the idea of backwards compatibility. So many people have talked on record saying that apparently the idea that they kept claiming was that Sony wanted to try and find a way to monetize classic Sony. Sony stuff to try and sell you maybe PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 3 games, and all of them would work on the PlayStation 5. And now that has been confirmed, completely false. So what we're looking at today is actually over here on the Ubisoft support page of all places, and on here is a bunch of frequently asked questions. These people are actually asking this giant publisher the most technical details about next-gen tech, because obviously we are all incredibly hungry for information, including the price. Please release the freaking price of the PlayStation 5. But a bunch of you have been asking, how does upgrading from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 work? A totally valid question, especially to people like myself. I actually own 350 PlayStation 4 games, so I'm pretty curious how much of this is going to work on the PlayStation 5. But their official response is very eye-opening. As part of the next-gen upgrade process, PlayStation offers a number of features designed to help move from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. PlayStation 4 players will join multiplayer games on PlayStation 5. That's pretty cool. Backwards compatibility will be available and sorted for PlayStation 4 titles, but will not be possible for PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, or PlayStation games. We also have information about the Xbox Series X. This, to me, is extremely disappointing, but it's not a shock. This is not a surprise. It's very difficult to actually be completely blown away because, I mean, when you really sit down and think about it, why would Sony have done this? Why would Sony actually sit down and just allow you to get games for free? Because that's basically what it is. I'm a huge collector. Obviously, I have literally thousands of games, and I own really cool stuff like Parasite Eve, why would Sony actually incentivize just putting in this disc and playing it right now on a PlayStation 5? When you think about it, that's probably millions of dollars of research and development, and they're not going to get a penny off that, you know? They're not going to find any way to actually get money off their research and development, but it only rewards me, the tiny percentile of gamers that have all this old-school stuff. I have so many freaking old-school games but I do actually want to make my own theory here that one of the things that happened this generation that I really supported was the PS2 Classics. Remember, this is something where on PlayStation 4, there are a bunch of times where you can actually purchase a PlayStation 2 game for usually like 10 or 20 bucks. And a lot of them are very, very good ports. Typically, they slightly upscale them, they make them like 1080p, sometimes they mess with the frame rate to make it a little bit cleaner, and they add in trophy support. They make it where, if you love these classic games, it's just a slight modernization of it. It's not a full done remaster, it's definitely not a remake, but it's an ability to actually play the old games, and one of the things that I enjoy the most has been the fact that this is a way for me to financially support older games that I really love. I purchase every single special edition and stuff of Final Fantasy because I love that series so much, I really want to vote with my wallet. And let's face it, one of the reasons I did hope that this would happen is because I feel like classic games are sometimes hard to have in a good format. Like, let's face it, this isn't going to do you any good. This is the PlayStation Classic Edition. This thing kind of sucks. I mean, obviously, I've done some videos on it. If you've actually owned this thing, even if you did hack it to put on other games and stuff, this is kind of a crappy little machine that initially cost $100. I think a lot of us are not even wanting to try and boot like these games. We do want to actually own them and play them and support them on the new gen tech. I was excited about the idea for sure, and... I guess now that we know it's not real, I kind of have a theory that we may see the price of PlayStation TVs increase. If you don't have one of these now, and you're at all into retro gaming, now might definitely be the time to pick this up. You probably don't even know this exists. Nobody knows what PlayStation TV is. Well, 
PlayStation TV is an interesting thing. As you can see, the back it has like nothing on the front. The back is literally just the ports, including an Ethernet port. This allowed you to play PlayStation 1 games uh, digitally. This allowed you to actually play PlayStation Vita games on a television, or you could do stuff like stream your PlayStation 4 to it. So I have like a PlayStation 4 right here. I could actually stream it to this TV or the downstairs TV, or I could stream it to my roommate's office or something, all with this device. Just by putting this, any TV I plug it into automatically becomes a remote PlayStation 4. So now that we realize that the PlayStation 5 is just going to be the PlayStation 5 and some slightly upgraded PlayStation 4 games, I think that we need to kind of just put to bed the fact that classic games are staying to the past. Most people seem completely fine with this. I've already been looking around online and 99% of the PlayStation 5 people I see talking about this, everybody's saying, I'm buying the PS5 to play PS5. And that's completely reasonable. I'm just the one style of modern gamer that is still super obsessed with the classics. But what do you think? Are you at all disappointed by this news? Is it not really a shocker to you? Let me know your detailed thoughts in the comments down below because I am super curious what you think. Now this may be actually the last video you see of me this week until Thursday and Friday. I'm doing a giant video about the Tony Hawk collection and also the Avengers game. So uh, I gotta get back to playing those. Much love to you guys. It is gonna be a crazy month for big giant reviews. So thank you for all the new subscribers. Thank you for liking this video and please do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Damn, I have so much freaking work to do. All right, time to edit. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you wanna see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.